Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, today I'm going to show you how to paint my favourite of all birds, an emperor penguin chick. Now I painted a few of these over the years, incredibly popular. Um, I'm going to paint it on a bit of board and um, very, very simple actually. Um, I'll show you how to do it. It should take about, ooh, I don't know, half an hour, something like that. So look, stay tuned. I'll get going and hopefully we'll have an emperor penguin chick at the end of it. Okay, so what I've done, I've sketched our little chick out. Now you can paint this first around the edge if you like, then, then sketch on top, because I'm gonna do quite a white background. It's gonna look like snow, and I'll show you how to do that right now. But for the purpose of this video, I thought I'd sketch this out like this so you can actually see the outline. Very, very crude, but aren't they cute? Emperor chicks are my absolute favorite. Um, they really are. So. Um, I've put the eyes in, I've just blacked this area in, which is dry now. Uh, you can use acrylic on the base if you like, uh, to get an oil on top, which is what I'm doing. You cannot put acrylic on top of oil. So if you want to use the base coat to go off quickly, you can use acrylics. However, I did this before and that is oil, so uh, we're all ready to go. So I've sketched them out. I put the eyes in the right place, very crudely as you can see. There's a beak that's gonna go in here <laughs> and I'm gonna paint the background in. So we'll do that and it uh, shouldn't take very long and you'll see how easy it is to do. So here we go, French Ultramarine and we've got some Cad Red. Actually this is bright red, but Cad Red's fine. Um, I'm just gonna mix it up, we want that sort of color. Now we're gonna go much darker. This is snow color, believe it or not, depending on uh, whether the sun's out or not. But that's a good base coat color for the, uh, the snow, that sort of color. And we're gonna go on top of that once it's dry. So this color will go all the way, all the way over the box. See how easy it goes on. There's no thinners on this. There's no liquid, nothing. I'm just popping that on. I'll add a little bit more blue. I think it needs to be a little bit more blue. Just touch on the red side. You have to be careful with the red. You'll use only a little of it because it will take up your whole painting, that red. It'll just, gosh, it's just unbelievable how it dominates everything. Look how crude this is. Very, very simple. Add a little bit of white into that. And if you want to darken that down a bit, I find actually adding just a little bit of black into it. Um, be careful with that, but um, it does seem to work. I've gone a little bit too purple, so adding a little bit more blue into it. And I'm chucking it on the board here and see what it looks like. You can see that looks okay. And well, you're going to be going over that once it's dry anyway. This is only a base coat. Let's add a little bit more blue. I'm adding blue into that and it's still wet. Just pop it on. So easy, isn't it? So easy. Now, I don't worry about that. I've only just done the general shape. We're just gonna go around it. If you want to, you can put all of this on the whole thing first, then sketch on top of it. This is actually quite a light color, so you can do that. And um, that is generally what I do, I have to say. I've kept it like this to show you, so it's, it's a bit easier, so you can see what's going on. But um, yeah, many times I'll actually just do that. I'll just paint and sketch on top of a background instead of painting around it. I think most artists actually do it this way, but um, I quite like to sketch on top of the oil paint. It's just easier. In fact, I'll almost do the background completely and I'll roll the brush right across the lot just to get the effect I'm after. So um, <laughs> just careful what you do with your paint, straight into it. So we're gonna do that all the way down and I'll do that in a moment. But what I'm gonna do now, without keep, I'm keeping this brush, we're gonna keep the, um, I'm not cleaning the brush. I'm just gonna add some paint into this guy here because he's got, he's, he's a funny sort of sort of blue as well, actually. Um, I'm just gonna add a little, a little bit of black into this as well and we'll see, what, we'll see what it looks like. That's gone a little bit too blue. Right, I've squeezed a little bit more black onto the uh, canvas here, onto the palette rather. I'm just gonna add that into the color I've already got there. I'm just really experimenting to see whether that color works. So. Yeah, it works pretty well. Now can I, let's a bit of shadow underneath the uh, tiny little wings of the emperor here. Little dark area. But you see, you really don't have to fuss very much. Now pretend I've already done this, this background. I'm gonna fill that in in a minute. It's just for the sake of this video, I'm doing things quite quickly. Do that all the way down, all the way, all the way down. 
this in here is a, a bit lighter actually don't go too dark with that I'm doing this very very crudely kind of this sort of color you can do it with a smaller brush if you like look I'm making a right old mess doesn't matter I'm just because I'm going to tidy it up in a minute I'm just doing it very very crudely with this brush just for to, to show you how easy it is and how quick okay right so once you've done all of this you've done your backgrounds looks ridiculous doesn't it but you can tighten it up and start you know I'm just done it in a really crude fashion just to show you then tighten it all up and you'll get to as in good blue Peter tradition is one I did earlier uh, you'll get it to that stage very very simple okay if you want to warm it up you can add a little burnt number into it as well but that's that's a good first stage to get to now what I'm going to do at this stage is to paint the background we're going to add all the highlights into the background and I'm going to show you how to do that right now so basically there's your brush your dirty old brush you give it a wipe on the towel don't add any white spirit into it there's so few colors on this palette you don't have to worry right here we go little bit of red going to warm it up depending on the well you can really just go whatever color you like with this snow if you you can always go uh if you want to warm it up you can add a little bit of pink into it as well as i have here and if you can see on here you're just going to scuffle that brush over the top of the the dry paint underneath adding a little bit of white into it not covering the whole thing i'm literally just going over the top in a very simple way with a quite a flat brush there just to create some shapes and some suggestions of footsteps in the snow if you like you can blend it a little bit with the other side just to stroke it through look how easy that is okay if I want to go over a little bit like that doesn't matter because I'm going to come back to that in a minute and do it if you did all this and you spent hours and hours and hours doing that then you'll be painting around it like this and it would just wouldn't work because you don't want that to stop there you want to you want it to carry on to make it look like that little penguins really stood there in the snow I'm going to show you a really neat trick in a minute as well that I discovered when painting um, footprints in the snow uh, it's a really really good little tip this is I'll show you that in a moment once I get to the bottom so we're going to carry on all the way down the bottom and then uh, we'll come back to it right well look okay that looks ridiculous I know it does but uh, that's the thing with oil painting you have to build it up to get somewhere now that's a good stage to get to you can see I've just gone over here like this I've not fussed at all with it you don't want to fuss with it just to get the background done and also when that dries you can add a few more details but we'll leave that for now now what I'm going to do now is a really really good tip that I discovered a few years ago when I was painting these pingus um, now uh, don't worry you see I've gone over the top like that when I start to put all the details in it will really stand out but what I'm going to do right now is to put some little footprints in the bottom now I try to do it I try to get this thing and I try to make little footprints like that but no 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 it's far easier if you turn it upside down and we'll show you how to do that upside down it's a bit ridiculous I know but it works okay so flat brush a little bit of white it's got a little bit of red in there as well and to create the footprints in the snow we're going to do this upside down so we still go across it like that but these edges bring them out like that once you turn upside down you'll see what i mean it will start to make sense it doesn't look like anything at the moment but it will once we turn it the other way out now I've not cleaned this brush at all yet since I started this um, and I've not added any medium this is pretty much neat oil paint there's nothing else it's straight out of the tube you use your finger as well oh, a good little tool the finger you can blend that the top of this is the top of these footprints you can't see it now since it's upside down but I'm going to turn upside down now and you'll get what I mean hopefully but anyway hopefully that'll look like footsteps let's see or footprints I should say footprints in the sand in the snow well something like that anyway I 
Right, anyway, that's, uh, that'll do for now because we can titivate as much as we like down the foreground. Um, let's get on with this guy. Now I'm going to paint in the, uh, the actual pingu itself. I keep saying pingu, I mean penguin. Uh, okay, so we just add some, some black into this. Not much uh, paint on the brush, just not too much, otherwise you're going to start to get into a muddy mess. And because the background here is still wet, it creates a nice sort of soft edge, which is all rather nice. Uh, you don't really want hard edges. It's quite nice to get some soft edges. I will add a bit bits of uh, a warm white, probably a little white and red, into the top there and make it look like it's got a bit of snow on his head probably. But um, it's just to take off that hard edge. Now don't forget you can move your board or your canvas around to make it easier for you. Sort of comes around here like that. Now I'm working from memory here because I painted a few of these guys. So uh, it's that, it really is that easy with the penguins. They're not, uh, they're not particularly hard to do, but they are very satisfying, a lot of fun and um, very, very appealing. So don't worry, I've gone over that, but don't worry about that. I'll use a bit, this is still quite a big brush I'm using at the moment. I'm going to use a smaller brush in a moment. So I start to get into detail and you start to reduce the size of your brushes. But uh, that's, we're not there yet. Got to wipe my brush, got a bit too much paint on it. Okay. These edges aren't aren't hard here. Then it's not a straight edge. But once because we're going wet in wet here, this is going to be wet paint here, and that is going to be wet paint. And then you can blend them a little bit, but not with the brush this size. We're going to reduce the size of the brush. Now there's a dark edge around the bottom of the penguin's head here, the baby penguin, the chick. Just round there, it's quite dark. There, it's just there. We go. <clears throat> still not really changed brushes here. I'm still using this flat edge brush. I'm using just turning it around. Now, if I again, I've said this many times before in my other videos. If I clean that brush with white spirit, then come back and start using it again for other stuff, you won't get all that white spirit off, and you're getting a right old mess. Start, start muddy. Now let's just see that flat edge here. I'm just going to demonstrate how easy this is. Just going to add a little bit of uh, colour onto that brush there. And I'm just going to add that into here and I'm going to blend it. You can get rid of that hard edge just like that. And then we're going to carry on doing all of this in a moment. Okay, it's time to swap brushes and we use a smaller brush and I'll do these eyes and the beak and all the white around here. Actually, this is all dry now and I, I've purposely left that like that and I've gone to the top first because it's much easier. I can't lean on that because it's wet but you can support your arm on this body, which is nice and dry, which is rather good. Just putting, uh, not, not fussing too much, it's gonna get the shape of the eye and put that in. We'll pop the very, very last thing I'll do on this painting is to put a little bit of light in that eye, which will really bring it together. But you don't wanna get bogged down with that stuff to start with. We'll do that later. And it'll probably be the very last thing I do on this painting. We did, we've got this odd little, this is where the edge of the mouth is on the, uh, on these little emperor penguins. See, I'm not, if I put that nose in now, or beak, I should say, then I just have to start fussing around it. There's no need to do that. I just put it in later on. I know it's gonna be there. It looks odd to start with, but it doesn't really matter, does it? You just gotta see the big picture and do it step by step. Right, now I'm going to add some white 
but it's, it's quite a dirty brush, which is fine. Let's put it on there. See, it's not quite white enough. Let's like, make it a little bit whiter. There we go. That's probably too white, but um, it will mix with this other color around here. Or oh, this is black, actually. If you want to warm this up, add a little bit of brown into it, burnt umber. That'll warm it up. But this is ivory black, which is slightly browner, so they say, but I'm not sure my eyes are good enough to tell that. If you use flake black, that's got a blue tint to it. So you might, prefer, you might um, prefer that, but I don't know. Can hardly see the difference. I'm sure the purists do, and the portrait painters would not like to hear me saying that, but when you're painting a penguin, I really don't think it matters too much. Right, so we're going to blend that edge in a minute. Again, you see I'm not really fussing very much, I'm just getting the... Uh, the paint on it. Again, you see, if you put that eye in and you fuss around with it and you start putting the pupil in, the light and everything else, and you realize you put it in the wrong place, and that's hard to tell until the painting is sort of nearing its ending where everything is starting, it goes from two dimensions to three, then you can start to see what's, what's wrong with it. And you realize then that the eye's in the wrong place. Well, you've wasted, you know, uh, well, however long it's taken you to do the eye. So, no point in doing it yet. No point in fussing it at all. Because it's quite likely you might have to move him. Now that edge there I want to blend. So I'm going to get my other brush. Nice soft brush. Just, just blend that in a little bit. Because that paint underneath that black is still wet. There we go. Get rid of that hard edge. So I'm going to go ahead now and just fill all that white in. I shan't show you me doing it now because it's very, very boring for you. I'm going to do all of that, get that finished, then I'll pop the beak in and um, like I said, I won't do the eyes yet. I'll do that in a minute. Right, so with the tiny little brush that I've got here, it's a bit knackered as you can see. I'm just going to soften these edges here. I've just been doing this and just to blend the lighter. It'd look ridiculous. Same on this one as well. You want, just want to blend the edges of the eye to give it a nice soft edge. Take your time with this because uh, it is quite important. And also they've got this funny little line here, these Emperor chicks under here as well. They've got like bags under their eyes that have been up all night. And again, I haven't, uh, the beak is going to go somewhere in here. I've not done it yet. Perhaps I'll do it while you're looking at this. It's going to go in there somewhere like that. And it kind of comes around like that. And this bit here is where the edge of, I think the edge of the mouth is something like that. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. I just want to... I'll tell you what, I'll pop that beak in, beak in in a very crude way so you can see. Again, I've not cleaned this brush at all. And this is still wet, so I'm just blending it out. And if you want, I'll just add a little bit of uh, white onto this brush. And I'll pop in a little highlight there. You can see this brush is really getting a bit tired. Just down there's a bit of a highlight. Now, when this dries, you can actually add more white into it, and maybe there's a little bit of liquid, and just fluff it up a little bit. It's looking a bit dark, but I need to do that when it's dry. And when this is all dry, we'll um, post a, a photograph of the finished painting up here so you can have a look. But what I'll do is probably go back in and I'll just dab in some white here just to give it a few more highlights. But there we are, that's, that's taking shape nicely now. I'm going to put one more dab of white on the beak, just a tiny little bit there. Now, if you want, you can put some, uh, we haven't done the body yet. We've only just done the head and we haven't done any snow around here. If you really want to, you can add a little bit of light into the eye and see what it looks like. Now you shouldn't really add flashlight into this eye because 
you really want a blue horizon in there because that's what they're looking at or at least snow but I'm going to put a little bit of dab a little bit of white in there just so it kind of brings it all alive there we go it's quite crude but you can see that that all immediately brings it to life now what we should do as well is add a little bit of blue into it and drag that across and that will be your horizon right there and it will give the eye some shape. Now we're taking the white out of there. I'm doing this quite crudely and quite quick just to show you. But again, I'll put that dab of white back in there, that little bit of flash in there, that um, dab of light, because it does add something. A very, very tiny amount, not too much. Just enough to make it look real. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to add snow to the top of that in a minute, but I'm going to get on with the body. Okay, so I think it's time to do um, the body. Um, now I'll use a different brush for that. Um, I'm going to just mix up the same, a similar sort of color that we've got here, slightly lighter, sometimes a little bit darker, and we're gonna sort of splodge away. Now, obviously Penguin's got feathers, but you don't see the individual feathers. We've got to create an impression of, of this f ball of fluff, if you like, and um, you can experiment with this because if you don't like it, just wipe it off. This is all dry now, so um, I'm going to use a similar colour to we've got here, slightly darker, and um, we'll see how we go. I'm just going to add it in. I'll do the dark areas first, probably, and a little bit under here. And um, we'll, like I say, we'll splodge away and create the illusion of feathers and like this furry sort of mass. He's a big fur ball at the end of the day. It's freezing out here, so he's got lots and lots of fur. It looks like he's got a big tummy as well. Here we go, we're just um, tapping with the brush here. Tap, tap, tap away. Let me get rid of these lines. We keep um, changing around with the color on the brush as well. Don't uh, experiment a little bit. If you don't like it, you just wipe it off. But I'm not painting, just because it's a paintbrush, you don't have to paint with it. You can do anything, it's a tool at the end of the day. You can well, you almost use your finger, or you can roll it like this. You can do you know, all, the, all sorts of effects you can do to see what works. So, you know, that kind of works, doesn't it? So just play, have, good, you know, have fun with it and um, tap away. But you don't want to cover it in one color. You want to create some depth in that. Um, really fluffy fur of this little penguin. The emperor chicks are this gorgeous color. Uh, and emperor penguins look very similar to king penguins actually, but the king penguin chick is an horrible brown color. And it's not anything like as cute as these little guys. These really are cute. Now that's the wing here. So I'm gonna keep that dark area inside there. Just add a little bit of black and blue. I'm just going to create that um, dark area under its wing there and also here. But you can't really go wrong here because, you know, there's not a lot going on really, is there? Got his arms down. Arms. Now these little penguins have got funny little claws, kind of feet. I don't know. <laughs> They're feet birds, you know what I mean. Um, they're not talons, are they? don't really know what they are. But um, you don't see them because they're all tucked underneath the fur at the bottom. Well, I did a little painting course and we did paint some um, pingus, as I like to call them. And my very good friend was there and he did a perfect penguin chick. It was beautiful. Looked really good, actually. Looked better than this. Don't tell him I said that. But to finish it off, he thought he'd paint the feet in with the legs and the knees sticking out the bottom. <laughs> Funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Honestly, I was crying with laughter, it was brilliant. You see me just rolling the brush here. I'm not um, painting in little bits of feathers and all that stuff. I'm just creating the sort of uh, mass of fluff. And of course I'm doing this all in one go. You'll have the luxury 
playing with it for a few days until you're happy with it. You know, you can go and once this is dry, you can go in with a little bit more light and go into it to create some highlights and little bits of snow. Well, we might do that in a minute. I'll just get to the bottom here. I've hardly any paint on this brush, but you see, but I quite like that. It's darker down the bottom than it is, than it is on the top. I've noticed. Generally, they're quite, it's quite light on a penguin around here. Careful not to uh, cover it completely. It's nice to leave these little gaps everywhere because it does create that depth in the fur or, or the feathers, I should say. I'm going to turn this on its side to do that in a minute. And the same on this guy as well. A bit too light, that. But it doesn't matter. We can just go straight back into it and darken up the uh, brush. Add a little bit of blue. A little bit of black, a bit of red. Just have fun with it. Keep rolling it around till you you get what you think looks good. Don't get carried away, by the way. You know, keep stop and look at it and think, oh, does that look right? That's, no, that's not quite right. Let's just change that. So what I just mixed up some uh, the same colors that we're using and you get these little blobs of snow down the bottom. I'm doing this quite crudely and quite quick for you guys. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, let this dry, come back to it tomorrow and just to finish off. And I'll show you um, what it will look like when I finish. But there's nothing here that I'm, that I'm not going to. There's no secrets. It's all just messing around with it like this until you're happy with it. And uh, I'll post a finished picture up so you can see what it looks like. But this is basically how I paint a baby penguin. Now just bring up the bottom here. This is all in shadow. Um, it's quite dark and sort of dirty sort of snow at the bottom here. So um, gonna add a little bit of bit more color, a bit more blue into it. A little bit of shadow there. And, the, and these bottom bits of snow are also in shadow. This is where his uh, funny little feet are. His funny little happy feet. And we can keep plodding here to make it look like snow. Stuck to the bottom of his feathers. And then add a few highlights, just add a little bit of white into it. I'm doing this quite crude and quite quick, but you get the general idea. Now, if you spend your time on this, more time than mine spending, you'll get it looking really good. So I'll post a finished picture up in a moment so you can see what it looks like when it's finished. But I'll come back to this tomorrow and carry on and I'll make all this look jolly nice with it and do more detail around here. Put more, this is too dirty around here at the moment. I don't know if you can see that here. This area here needs to be much whiter, but it's quite nice to get that at that stage, that colour, then when you go in with the highlights, you get more depth again. So I'll add more white into that. You can add a tiny bit of red to make it, it will start to look um, warmer. It's very, very the tiniest amount though. And then just keeps plodding around with, uh, with white and these colours that I've been using and until you get the desired effect. But that is basically it. So there you go, super easy and hopefully you enjoy painting your own emperor penguin chick and uh, post your comments below, I'd like to see how, see how you get on. So uh, that's it for this one and I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned a little thing uh, about painting emperor chicks and um, until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe as well, really appreciate that, thanks so much, see you next time.